Hello. Uh, this is the Saturday situation. I film this throughout the week as things come in. That way it makes it a little easier on me and <laughs> it just makes it easier. I have some orders that had come in. I also went into my girlfriend's quilt shop. Kimber Bell <laughs> is Kim Christofferson and her twin sister is Chris. And I'm not sure her last name, but they are twins. And so Kim has the Kimber Bell side where she does all the, the cute little patterns and they come out with kits and embellishment things. And I'll show you a bunch of things with that. But also, um, the quilt store is called My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop. They're in Logan, Sandy, and now Orem. I live in Orem. This store is like less than a mile from my house. Boy, was I surprised when I ran across them. <laughs> so really exciting. Um, I'm gonna show you what's in there because they are an ex not exclusive, but they are a Kimberbell distributor. They have probably a third of their store is dedicated to Kimberbell, as well as normal quilting stuff and machines and, and whatnot. Okay, so since I'm talking about Kimberbell, let me show you what I found in there. Um, when I first stumbled across my girlfriend's quilt shop, it was, I'm trying to think when it was, it was a year ago or a year and a half ago. It's been a while, but not that long. I um, found this quilt and it was so cute. They had it on the display. And Kimber Bell has embellishments. So there's like a pillow sitting on the couch. There is a, a th three dimensional, there's a pillow, three dimensional flowers. It's embroidered. Now I got the embroidery version because you can get the sewing version. I have the machine that can do this. So it's just really cute. And then the embellishments that they do, here's some more of the projects and the embellishments. So I wanted this. I didn't want to pay for what they were asking because I was shell-shocked. <laughs> um, this is an embroidery file, which I know are more money, but it was just not what I expected. I nothing I needed at that moment. I am learning that they retire things, and I don't know if this is going to be retired soon because obviously I saw it a while ago. And so when I saw it in the store this week, I grabbed it because I wanted to make sure I had it because I've had my eye on this. I thought it was so cute. Now I also grabbed the embellishment kit that goes with it because this is part of what makes it cute. So there's ribbons and clothesline, little, little clothes pins, the mylar, different things. This is actually the quilt and the pillows that are on there where you make itty bitty little quilts and you're going to quilt them. Let's see if I can show you more. There's the pillow, there's the quilt. See it's hanging on a line and it's quilted. This is that quilt. So, um, and you know me, I want to make it my own. So I might do something different with the fabrics, but I have the embroidery files and the embellishments. I also just did some hunting around on Etsy and there are so many um, stores that make little embellishment type things that I could go find some more. Anyway, I'm really happy with this. So I picked up these two things more out of fear that they're gonna go away. And the fact that they were both in stock was exciting to me now in there they also have a lot of little kits like this one by the way this is their card the link again the link is below but this kit I think I pulled it out that's why it looks the way it does hold on all right this kit has everything you need to make this little wall hanging it's not very big but it's sure cute and there's instructions. I don't have the size without opening the pattern, but it's, it's a small wall hanging, just cute, but it comes with the fabrics that you need and the pattern. Now you have to look real close when you find these and see what it includes. Not everything comes with a pattern. And I learned that the hard way when I bought the little witches kit um, that I had shown you when I finally found the pattern I was excited about. So, um, this has a pattern because it's not part of these Kimberbell sets, but it has what you need, except the batting. Of course, you don't get batting in here. But here's all your little pieces. 
your strips, your batting, your pattern. Let's see if it reminds me how big it is. I saw it in person. It was just cute. And I like snowflakes and snowmen. Six and a half by 12 and a half. So it is... <laughs> it is about that big. So that will be fun. And it is a hand or a, a machine, sewing machine project. It's not for the embroidery machine. So that will be something I can pull out, make it as a quick project. But I wanted to show you how fun... They, these are and they have these kits that I just haven't seen done anywhere else and it makes sense because it's easy to make something if that makes any sense okay, hold on. all right now it does also say what where the pattern comes from and it's the January outlet quiltlet sorry um, But maybe that's the name of the pattern. I know that's where I will find it if it tells me there is a pattern. Okay. I picked up this. Now, um, last week or the week before, I had shown you the Kimberbell fall version. They have the last six months of the year. This is the first six months of the year. This is a machine embroidery. You get six 22 by 22. They're calling them seasonal table toppers. I know of people that turn these into bigger projects um, by adding additional blocks. And making them a quilt or a larger wall hanging so much you can do with it but they are um, designed to be a table topper so there they are by themselves and it shows you just a close-up of some of the little embroidery that's on each one now this one for January has these little skis and I actually found the little kit to do January and it has I'm not sure what's silver or frosted on that other than snow <laughs> But it has pretty much everything you need. I don't know if what it comes with. Let's see, front, binding, backing, embellishments. No pattern, but it tells you it's the Kimberly Gem, Kimber Bell January Cuties, Volume 2. And Cuties, Volume 2, January through June. And it is that. Oh, there's not a picture. Anyway, it's that block. I want to see if I can find a bigger picture of the block since that's kind of hanging off. It's the first one of the month. Now I have the CD in here because this is for machine embroidery. There we go. And everything is made block by block. So this is a block, this is a block, this is a block, or should I say hooping? And then you just make it in a hoop. Follow instructions and there you go. So I thought I would try it with this since I found it and see um, see how it goes. All right, now they had this, which is a little kit. Oh, by the way, in the store when I went earlier this week, Christmas was 40 to 50% off, anything Christmas related. So nothing I've shown you falls into that category, although they might have been on discount Probably not, can't remember, some things were not. Anyway, this one right here is the Cup of Cheer wreath kit. It's a hanging kit. And I thought, okay, I don't need the Cup of Cheer Advent quilt or blanket because I made my own Advent and I used the Cup of Cheer fabrics and I really like what I came up with. So I don't really need to make something similar to it. But I have seen the pattern and they have like complementary patterns of smaller things. And I thought this would be cute to do. So this tells you you need your, it comes with the front, the binding, the pattern, and embellishments. Then it doesn't come with the pattern. It says pattern, but it doesn't. So I'm actually gonna open this to double check. This is sealed up really good. Because I could be wrong, might be tucked in there. The gals at the store um, didn't think it had that. Let me just check. But it has what you need to make that. And then this is for the the ribbon, the bow. And there's no pattern in here. So I think that was a mismark on here. But I do know that it comes with a, it comes out of a book. They did I did figure that out before I bought it. However, I couldn't find the book. I was really bummed, but I figured with it being Christmas and things 
being discounted. It might be something that is soon going to not be available, so I want to find it. However, these are just cute for Christmas stuff, and I got it discounted, and I could use these in my other projects or even figure out how they did it, because I did find what the wreath looks like, and it's cute, but it's not exciting. <laughs> so I have that, but anyways, half off. I think that's what it's half off. They also had clearance fabric. Let's look at those fabrics that I picked up from Kim, or from the my girlfriend's quilt shop. It is not by Kimberbell. I'm really surprised, but it is that style with the small print, which is probably why the store carries it. So there's that one. Oh, by the way, that red one is. Shelly Comiskey for Henry Glass called Timber Gnomes Tree Farm. So that's a Christmas print. This one is Seashore Drive by Sherry and Chelsea for Moda. Riley Blake Designs. Bees Plaids by Lori Holt. I Believe in Angels. Bunny Hill Designs for Moda. Binder. I thought it would be nice since I'm trying to organize. In fact, that is a big project I will be doing this year is organizing my patterns and my embroidery files that have not already been organized. And really anything this last year has just been kind of put in a drawer, their own drawer. But I'm going to organize and this nice big binder is nice. Nice, nice, nice is nice. Um, so I'm going to uh, hopefully get the right type of the three ring tabs. We could put them on the end of the book so I can put the books in here and keep all my Kimberbell files together and then add them to my wall of embroidery files. And soon we will be working on the embroidery machine and you'll see more what I mean by that. So my embroidery files go in a separate place, but now I have a place for it. They sell more than Kimberbell, and I found this book along with a lot of other books. And look, I'm see I'm looking for the holidays and the seasons, and that's what this is quilting throughout the year. And it's um, got these really cute big blocks. Oh, look how cute! I hadn't seen that turned into a bedspread. So I'm going to add that to my stash of seasonal quilt block options and put that in there. 16, actually, not 12. I also grabbed this. I have seen it before. This was 40% off. Online, I did see this for 20% off. It's probably based off of availability. If it's still there, I don't know. But it is by Sandy Gervais. It is the wall hanging. Is it a wall hanging? <sighs> Adele and Spring Table Runner. And fabric for binding top. Like, sorry, fabric for runner, top, and binding. So it doesn't have the back. But look at all the different colors that are in there. And that's pretty. So, lots of little square blocks in this. That'd be fun. Now, the, the container itself looks like a mason jar. And maybe it's a pattern. Wouldn't that be funny? They might say, use your, your box to outline your... <laughs> I don't know, just guessing. Cute though. And I wanna open this, but I don't wanna open it. <laughs> There's a pattern by Riley Blake. 30 by 62. Yeah, a lot of little squares are what make that up. Let's look at the fabric. This is the backing fabric. 
And these are all different increments based off of what the pattern calls for. But they are all, all the line Adele in spring. And I do believe I have a fat quarter set of this that I had gotten from Creative Notions. These are a lot, a little, looks like five inch strips. And then this is the jar fabric. It's called In a Fruit Jar Spring. Pieces from my heart. It's the pattern company. There we go. Now to put it back. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this. It's charm pack friendly, so you need a charm pack and then yardage, two colors of yardage. And the rest of it is your border. If you choose to add to it, your binding and whatever you want for your backing. So that is one we will be doing soon. So this week I was scheduled to have shoulder surgery and I went in for it, didn't actually get it, but it, they had put the block in before we realized I couldn't have surgery. So I've been dealing with this numb arm I guess in a way it's like a trial run to see how how long the block will stay in and yesterday I had total paralysis yesterday it was Tuesday where I had no movement in fact I had this floppy floppy arm and very frustrating so the sling was there to help but I couldn't do much but wiggle my fingers and now my arm moves but I'm exhausted because it takes a lot of effort to move because it is slowly wearing off but the numbness is still there so Anyway, that's why you see the sling, but still no surgery. So they are working through several things, trying to figure out what's going on. All right, so that's that. But I did get some things in the mail I wanna share with you. I just did the video on the Creative Notions bag. So look for that if you haven't seen it. And I ordered through Kimberly Jolly this. This is this cute box. It's called Summer Sampler. It's a quilt kit by Sandy Gervais. And let's see. Riley Blake Designs includes the quilt pattern and the fabric for the quilt top and the binding. So it's that. And I have a bunch of fabric um, that different pieces from different sets of boxes and things that I can add to this and totally do it do a second dairy project or maybe change the colors a little bit if I wanted to, but I think this is really cute and I think this is a good time to start this. Providing I will be able to use it. So obviously the first little bit directly after the surgery, I won't be able to do a lot of stuff like this. So I can move my hands, I can type, but anything that requires the muscle, not gonna happen. So uh, since I have some extra time, maybe I can start this and see how far I can get. But let's look at what's in there. Oh, it's so hard. Doesn't mean I'm gonna stop trying. Uh, okay, so we have, wow. I'm gonna guess these are little fat eights that are in there. And then these three look a little bigger. Look how cute that is. Definitely gonna make this one like right away. Lots of big pictures in there. <laughs> They're 
your swim trunks as well as the bathing suit. Oh, there's no bathing. Oh yeah, there it is. There's the bathing suit and there's the swim trunks. All right. Well, anyway, there's that. We also have more fabric coming out of here. These are quite a bit thicker than this little bundle right here. And I'm sure they're sending us what we need. I'm, I, I have no idea. But look in the bottom of this. Voila! Big piece of fabric of it looks like linen-ish. It has just a really pretty texture look to it, but it is quilty cotton in this cute box. So let's see if it tells me in here. <laughs> There's a lot of different different pieces of fabric. Nope, it doesn't. Each individual block gets its own instructions, so I I don't see at a quick glance. It is re not required, but what is coming in the box. But let's look at this box a little closer. <laughs> so here's the back. So it's like you get to see all four sides of the truck, and there they are tailgating. Hang in, I have them picnic out the back. All right, so we've seen these bigger pieces and the, um, a quick glance at these. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So many pieces of different fabric it's it's adorable and amazing at the same time now we're onto this bundle So these are croquet um, balls and mallets. So, lots of path fabric, different pieces, different sizes. Um, again, here's what the sampler looks like. Oh, here we are. Summer sampler block, block of the month. Uh, finished size is 60 by 78. It's red, white, and blue. So here's a quick list. Not that you're gonna read it all, but those are all the different fabrics in here. Um, you're also going to need the Trirex tool. You will need this as no templates are included in the pattern. So I need to figure out what that is. The, we also need two yards wide back fabric or you can use, now they actually have it in stock for you or you can use some other of choice of your choice. I didn't want to get the wide back fabric. I like wide back fabric, but um, you know me. If you don't, you'll do by now or will be. I think these are cute and I'm going to use them, but I have a lot of other fabric 
actually from this line. So I might put this together a little differently as far as where they tell me to put colors because I have a lot of fabric options. But going back to the back side, I didn't want to be like everybody <laughs> and order their backing. But I did find this, which is the mallet, but on the navy, and it was on sale. So I got the amount of fabric needed for the backing, but I didn't pay as much as I would have if I had bought their 108 kits just because this was on sale. That is from the um, Fat Quarter Shop. So let's talk about my shoulder since I brought it up. I went in for shoulder surgery. First of all, why did I need shoulder surgery? Well, many, many, many years ago, I got in a car accident and I had whiplash and then got in another car accident and whiplash. And mine was just uncomfortable. I couldn't sleep. So I would always sleep with my arm up and behind my head, just it gave me better support. And so, and I'm right-handed, so usually it's the right hand that's up. So part of it is just laying funny for 25 years or so. And then just general wear and tear. And I mean, there's cracking and popping and sometimes they just get achy, very rare. I've even had my shoulders, or I think it's this one, lock up on me. So, different things. So anyway, I get massages. I've even gone through a process called cupping to help draw the toxins out to help relieve that muscle tension um, on my upper shoulders, which helped a lot to relieve the pain and the stress from my neck, which was causing me to sleep funny. And then also the issue with my neck, my shoulder. And then 20 years ago or so, when I was married and my ex-husband's stepson lived with us, I'm folding the fabric from that box. <laughs> anyway, um, he wanted a skateboard ramp built and his dad had some really bad health issues with his back. And so I was the most able-bodied and willing to do it in my 30s. So I made him, I think, I think it's called a grinding board. It's for a skateboard. I haven't seen one since, but he could hop up on it and, and, and grind. Skateboarding was really big back in the 90s. And it might still be, I just haven't had kids <laughs> involved in it. And then there's more computer games and stuff like that that are out now that I'm aware of. So I don't know about the skateboarding craze anymore. Long story short, I pulled a muscle in my actual shoulder on the shoulder blade, dealing with that. All right, so fast forward. Last year, when my husband and I remodeled and moved into his house, I fell going down some cement stairs outside, going into the basement. And I missed the last two steps. And my hands were full and I tried to catch myself and the railing was on the left side and I don't know why, maybe because I'm right-handed, or I, I don't remember what I was carrying. Anyway, somehow I used my right hand to catch me, and I ended up all twisted and turned, and, and I felt this pop and oh, pain you couldn't believe. And so I was just kind of dealing with it. But the next week I was seeing the doctor for something else, and I brought it up, and he said, well, let's x-ray. There wasn't anything in the x-ray. Okay, fine, I was just being I'm complaining for no reason. <laughs> Um, so four or five months later, it's still really bothering me. So then we get an MRI done and the MRI comes back with six things wrong. Six things wrong with my shoulder. I, I expected it to come back and say, no, you're fine. Just like the x-ray. So I have possible torn rotator cuff. I have torn muscle and ligament from the fall, which are tears. So that will not heal on its own. I have bicep tendon, which goes right through here. It's not in its groove and it's kind of sits externally, I guess, on the bone, I'm not sure. But it's, it's kind of free roaming, which is why there's some popping. But there's also inflammation and arthritis going on in there. But the inflammation is caused from this tendon moving around. So they're gonna fix the tendon, they're gonna fix the torn muscle and tendon, as well as uh, deal with the rotator cuff and when I saw the orders yesterday, 
they're all in different wording and there was a fourth thing on there and I'm not sure what that is. So anyway, there's possibly four things that they're gonna fix. So I went in for surgery. They had me do, because of the medication that I'm on, go get some blood work done. And I did that the day before. And then they said, no, you're on hold. Your numbers are too low. So I went to my general practitioner and he put me on a prescription, had me just take massive doses. It was for, um, this is my brain fog between COVID, menopause, and now anesthesia, because we did get that far, uh, for potassium. And so I was taking major doses of potassium, eating bananas and avocado and carrots, and I would have bought broccoli if I had realized that was on the list. Uh, dried peaches, apricots, dried apricots. There's a long list of things in the food group. So I was eating that stuff and taking these big doses of potassium pills. I went back in early yesterday morning and I pushed my surgery to 1030 and put me at the end of the doctor's list or, you know, his schedule. That way I could get in early, get the blood test done, and then they can make a determination if I was going to have the surgery. So I didn't even know if it was going to happen until I got there and had been there for a couple of hours. So then they come and get me, take me back in the room, and I'm like, okay, this is a good sign. Um, they said my potassium went from 3.0 to 3.7, and it needed to be a minimum of 3.5. So, we're go. But the person ahead of me, there was a delay, complication, something. So I'm back there longer than I wanted to be. So I didn't actually go into surgery to close to 11.30, and I was scheduled for 10.30 and had been there since 7. <laughs> And up all night long because I had to take the potassium pills. Okay, so they give me a block in my shoulder. But meanwhile, I've been hooked up to an IV and they've given me um, something to make the block not so painful when they put the needle in your shoulder to give you the block. But the block is highly recommended, not required, but it helps with recovery and the pain after. In fact, if I had had surgery, I would probably not be feeling it. I would still have to be careful about moving because I would want to be moving or today I can move. I just, anyway. So the block went in. Then we went up to surgery and I'm in a surgical center and, they, and I was reading through the paperwork when I signed in and it said, prior, prior to going to the, sur the actual surgical suite, but it said uh, about their uh, living will and how they deal with all that. And they said, you know, we don't care what you have on file at the hospital. If something should go wrong here, we will stabilize you and get you to the hospital, which by the way is two doors down, two buildings down. And then if you have specific requests for you know, what you want done, the hospital uh, will, will deal with that there. But our job is to, because they're a private company, the surgical center, our job is to stabilize you and get you where you need to be. And so my husband, I was explaining to him that I saw that. And I'm like, so just so you know, if something should happen, they're they're gonna go to the hospital. And I don't have anything, like I do not resuscitate. He actually does, but I don't. And I wanna make sure <laughs> he knows we're not doing anything. We're gonna get things better. But should, for whatever reason, anyway, it won't be dealt with there. And so then he made the comment, have you ever been in an emergency room? In a, Ambulance, oh my gosh, have you ever been in an ambulance? And last February, he and I were rear-ended on I-15, which is the freeway that goes through Salt Lake. And we did end up sitting in an ambulance while they checked our vitals, and then they suggested we go to the ER to get checked out. But that's the closest I'd come to being in an ambulance, is just sitting there. <laughs> so I'm like, no, not really. So then he says, well, let's not make that happen today. I'm like, okay. So as they're taking me up to the surgical suite now, I make a comment that uh, today's not the day to sign off on my bucket list that I had gone on an emergency ride in an ambulance to the hospital. And they're all kind of chuckling and it's, it was cute. There are probably six or seven people in there dealing with me and I had already met the anesthesiologist and the doctor and the PA, but they weren't even in the room at that time. So it's all anesthesiology and nursing staff. And well, I take it back, the anesthesiologist was there. He was behind me. He was there the whole time. 
Okay, so as they get me up there, they move me from my bed to the hospital bed, and I have to get myself up and over, and I made the comment, I says, have you ever seen that YouTube video where the nurses are making fun of the patients and how they, they transfer themselves from one bed to the other? And some of them had heard of it and some of them had, had not, so we're laughing about that. And then they're trying to get me <laughs> to move, and I can't, I just can't. And all of a sudden my chest is, I couldn't, couldn't take a deep breath. It was different than any other time, like when I couldn't breathe, it was, it was just different. I, my chest just couldn't breathe. And so I was like, hold on, hold on, I can't, you know, and plus they'd given me this block. I had the little numbing stuff in my system. I just figured I'm just kind of weak. And then they start getting really worried. So they got me onto the bed, but then they hooked me up with electrodes, the, the um, not just the normal ones that they would be using, but like the full gamut of electrodes to check everything. And then they have a powwow. The doctor had come in and they discuss what's going on. The anesthesiologist had already talked to me. He wasn't really comfortable with what was going on. Felt like I either was having a heart attack or may have had one. And either way, it would not be good for surgery. And he wasn't sure. He says, you get to go to the <laughs> emergency room now. I'm like, oh, ambulance ride? They're like, no, it's not critical, but you need to go straight there. So they call my husband. <laughs> And it's an unknown call number on his cell phone, and he never answers those kind of calls. And he almost didn't answer, but he did. And it's the anesthesiologist saying, well, your wife's okay, but we've had a problem. And he's like, whoa, didn't expect this, and I'm glad I answered, and whoa, what's going on? So they get him um, up in the room, and I come back to the room, and they don't even have me change my clothes. I'm still in the hospital gown, which is actually... Um, that, like I said, they're a surgical center. It's not part of the hospital system, so they, but they're sending me over there in the clothes I was wearing or the, the gown that they had given me. And my husband drives me over, and I'm kind of loopy, and my arm is dead. So they put me in a sling because they can't let me go without it, and my arm seriously was just loop, limp and loose. It was quite frustrating. I looked down at it, and I, all I could do was like wave my body to make it move. Humor, I find humor and things like this. Okay, so all I know about the ER is I slept a lot. Now, I had not slept hardly at all the night before or the night before that because I was getting ready for some stuff. And about a week ago, I got a B12 shot. And I think it's working because I have had lots of energy. If I sit still for very long and I am tired, I will take a nap. But I wasn't actually sleeping very well the last two nights, which might even have something to do with what was going on with my heart. But they were taking tests and doing things, and my husband went down to the cafeteria twice to get food for us. And all I know is I was there for quite a while, and I slept through most of it. And in the end, they're like, we need to, to just observe her more, but the options are take her home or check her in. And she's not, you know, we don't need to check her in. We just need to have her go see a cardiologist. So I finally got the appointment scheduled for tomorrow morning. So tomorrow, which is Thursday. I'm gonna go see the cardiologist, but meanwhile, I'm supposed to be taking these extra potassium pills, so there's a reason I brought that up. And I am wondering, because potassium affects your heart, if it could be because of the mega doses I was having and them trying to, to get my levels up, if that could have something to do with it. I do know at the ER, they tested my potassium and it came up at 3.9, which within a 24 hour period is quite the jump, and it even could be, could have gone higher but I tend to think it's something from the block or the, the shot that they had given me, me just being antsy, although I didn't, also didn't feel as, as anxious as I usually do in this situation, or something with the potassium. So now we wait, <laughs> and I have a dead arm. So like I said, it's kind of a trial run, I guess, to see how I respond to, to this, so fun, huh? But I'm loopy. I'm hearing things too. All right, so that's my update on Tuesday. We'll see what other updates I have for you before I put this video together and send it out. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Well, tomorrow in the video, but you'll see me in just a minute. All right, so I have the Cotton Cuts subscription for Thread and as well as 
the mystery block of the month <laughs> and I get a free pattern with the thread and I picked this and I want to make it and so I've decided I'm going to use this which is a that quarter bundle of 15 pieces and it's the fairy dust ombre fairy dust collection and I picked this up for less than half price um, at Quilt Etc. And that's the store in Sandy, Utah, where I've done a, um, some fabric hauls as well as a video tour. So you can go back to my um, other old videos and find those. But they have really good deals on bundles of fabric. And when I went in there, I had shown this in last week's video, by the way. They had a whole bunch of the of, of this line. I don't know if they have any more, I'll be honest. But they had a, a good sized basket of it. Usually when I find their fabric like this on sale, they are random pieces that coordinate either in color or style. But this is actually a line. All right, I'm trying to get the ribbon off of here because it doesn't matter. So the pattern that I want to do is called Reflection by Moda. Uh, I believe the pattern runs this way. The dimensions on it are 66 by 84 and it says to use 12 fat quarters. Just seeing if they happen to have it showing making it bigger and it really doesn't matter. I'm going to adapt it. But there's 15 in this bundle. And there are a couple I think I could take out. Like, for example, these two right here are really similar in color. So if I needed to eliminate, I would probably take one of those out. The same with up here in the peachy orange area. I might remove... Hmm. Some of these that look really close together. Struggling. But if I choose to use all of them, I could easily do that because 12, so the pattern calls for 12, divided by four, because there's four columns, is three. Stick with me. <laughs> so takes about three fat quarters to do a row. Does that make sense? So if I have an additional three fat quarters than what the pattern calls for, I can do one more row. And the only difference is I'm gonna need a little more backing, background, and then I'm gonna put one more little column in there, but I will be able to make this wider and probably more like a queen size because 66, oh, let's see, where did it go? 66 by 84. So it'll probably be close to square. And I'm gonna start cutting into this. And if I decide I don't like how close some of these colors are, or if I'm just feeling like this is an overwhelming project, I will not do the full 15. So what I'm gonna start out with is picking the 12 that I like the best in case I get to that point where I don't wanna do all of them. Let's look at these. Oh, I see what they did. Anyway. So, and I'm thinking one of these greens will probably come out of here too. These are really close, and so are these. So, it might make sense to take this out if I end up doing a white background because it is so light. So I'm just gonna put this white right here next to it. There's still contrast, but with it being ombre, it gets really, really, really light on one side. Okay, so maybe it would actually make sense to keep it at the 12 pieces and not use the lightest section of the block. And that might show up better. I think I like that idea. 
to follow what I'm saying. So I wouldn't use the whole block. I maybe use the really light ombre part on the border. Now this one is still got a lot of color to it. Let's see what this one does. This is its lightest. And again, here we are next to the white. Still some contrast. So I could probably make it work. I've got lots of options and things to think about, especially since I've got extra options and look how pretty that is. <laughs> extra options and or extra pieces in its ombre. So Okay, so let's go back to my original thought if I needed to reduce colors and at least get an idea of what I want to do with that. I don't know where all this came from. Am I close? <laughs> all right, I do still think this needs to come out. And over here, it might make sense to take this one out because again, it is also very light. Oh. So it will disappear and we have that there, which makes me also lean towards removing this one. That's actually not that bad. That's still pretty, um, has a lot of contrast still. Now, I actually like this color. I'd like to leave it in. I'm not really excited about that one. Or even that one. I only need to take three out. So if I were to remove all of that, uh, I could put this peach one back in, or maybe, uh, I don't know. You guys might have to help me with this one. <laughs> if you had to pick one of these to leave in, which one would you do? I'm actually thinking it would be this one. This one's a little too yellow, but really there's no yellow in there, which is why this might need to stay. And there is all of this. I don't know. Or maybe because this is so light, the green needs to come out and leave these in because look at the dark contrast on this is still or the light contrast it is still I think that's what I'm gonna do is forget the colors that I just happen to like and stick with ones that are going to show up the best and these really light ones need to come out so tell me what you think if I should uh, maybe reconsider this I don't remember where this came from so I'm now putting it over here. That could work. That could work really well. That's quite light. See, this would be pretty to put like these, all these light ones together, these light pastel ones. <sighs> all right, so these are, these are out. And as I cut these up, when I get to that, I will put these back in if I decide to do the 15, um, or if I decide to leave the lightest blocks out, this part, then I would still add, but you know, that, that doesn't make sense because the dark one over here, it's darkest, is not much, eh, it is, but it isn't, it's not much lighter, darker. Oh, I'll figure that out. But I'm excited to get started the start. This is going to be a lot like the dotty quilt that I did. And so I will let you know as I'm making that because that is going to be made soon. Now, while I'm standing here, I want to show you some other things I had gotten this week. This fabric right here is white with little teeny triangle white on it. Let's come up here white on white. This I picked up from my girlfriend's quilt shop. So wh what I had shown you earlier in the week, I actually taped last week. And so I went back in today 
and picked up some more. So this is part of their clearance scrap fabric. This is about a yard. And then this is about two yards. And this is about two yards. And they're scrap uh, large remnants. And I really like the white and simplicity of it. And that has like outlines of stars. And this is like little solid stars. This one says American Dream, Riley Blake. Riley Blake Designs. It's that blue one, this red one is the, this is actually says Lori Holt, the <laughs> Lori Holt Be My Bonnet plaids is where this one came from, which is also Riley Blake, but it says it on here. This one says American Dream by Oh, I can't read that. Danny Stogrid? I don't know if you can read that either. Anyway. And then this white one. I'd be surprised if there's a name that's readable on it. Because <laughs> it's white. Riley Blake. 2017. White on White Basics by Riley Blake. And it doesn't give a designer credit. But got me some whites. Some remnants, good size remnants and white. Okay, now they're still discounting their Christmas stuff. So I picked up this cute pattern for half off. Vintage December, looks like a big snowflake. Really cute. That's 34 by 34, so it's just a um, good size wall hanging. That, well, if I were to make four of those, that would make it, what, 70, or 68 by 68. That's still small. So there's quite a bit you can do with that one. This one is called Grace Every Day, it is 62 by 72. It is not on sale, but you do get the letters in it. And I'm not sure if we're tracing the letters or how that's going, so I can choose to put that in or just do another row of the little blocks, but I think the block itself is really cute. And this one is by Chelsea Stratton Designs. That Quarter Friendly, it's called Hello Fall. And it's just simple. Little flying geese with pumpkins with a heart in it. Thought those were adorable. I found a kit. This is on sale and it's on sale this week. It just came out today. Today is actually Wednesday. So I don't know if it goes Wednesday to Wednesday, but this kit includes the fabrics. So I'll put a little a little tag in there that says has fabric for the front the binding and the pattern and has these really cute fabrics which we need to look at but the pattern itself oh this is 25% off is there's a, a bigger version but mine are in the the peach colors so it has this it's called Little Things by Riley, Riley Blake. I guess it goes this way, doesn't it? This has lots of little words on it. And they're all different sizes based off of what the pattern calls for. And this is a pattern kit. Look at all the cute little guys on there. <laughs> I see a squirrel or a skunk. I think that's what that black and white one is. 
Maybe it's an elephant. Octopus? Whale? Elephant? Fish? I don't know. Cute though. Here's some more. Here's your white background. And then you get a panel that you get to cut, which also has more of that wordy print on the panel. Those are bigger blocks than I thought they would be. <laughs> Cute. Let's put you on the wall. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's continue with the uh, shoulder update. How about that? So today is, I lied, today's Thursday. Today's Thursday. I went in for surgery two days ago. They didn't end up doing it. They're now concerned about my heart. I had to see the cardiologist today. But meanwhile, they had already given me the block and, and sent me to the emergent or to the operating room. So this arm has been dead because <laughs> I still have the block, and it's something that can last a couple days. I now can at least move my arm, although it's still kind of dead weight. And I have a hard time lifting it, which is what you just witnessed. So I'm sure when I finally do get the surgery, this block will be really nice, but right now it's kind of inconvenient. All right, enough about that. Now, I picked this up. It's called So Organized. This is by the people that do the pop-up cans, the, the, the metal um, skeletals, skeleton frames. I'm not even sure how to, I'm calling it, but this I want to make and put this by one of my machines that doesn't have a, a lot of space. And this is like a, an easel with pockets and the pattern for this is in here. Comes with instructions, frame, elastic, and a label. I don't know, ah, they are in there. So. My goal is to get that made. I also have an upcoming project. This is called Sew on Point. It is a pattern through my girlfriend's quilt shop and it does, can be used with anything. I went ahead and, and picked up the charm squares that they had used because it was on sale from when they were doing the project. So this is a project from last year that they still had. Uh, pieces up, but look how cute. So this is just white charm pack. Then we have this one and I'm going to put a picture up of what this full line looks like, but they're just super soft and it looks so pretty to see it in person and to see those colors. So even if I don't use this on that, that was a nice deal. And I'm working with them to see if this can be a project that I do with you guys. So stick around for that and we'll see if that happens. Good news, I am getting an affiliate link for my girlfriend's quilt shop. I don't have it just yet. So if this video goes out and you don't have the link, just know I will be getting it because next week I'm gonna be doing a shop tour of their store and I should hopefully have that set up for you so you can go online and help me and I'm also working on getting you guys uh, some kind of a discount code or promotion so stick around for that and that's my girlfriend's quilt shop and this is the twin sister to um, the Kimberbell gal so half of their stores Kimberbell I'm excited okay so what else have I got going on here I think that's enough. It seemed like it was a lot, or once I opened it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to rock your world. Um, I want to make, I'm getting my fabrics figured out so I can do these blocks of the months and go at my own pace. 
because I'm going to do this one. This is one I was talking about through Christmas. Uh, American Patchwork Quilting. It was a free um, block of the month through them. And I think it was just for their subscribers. So I'll be honest, I, I don't know if everyone has access to this, but I'm going to be making this. So if you have access to their subscription, because it is a magazine, or their website, you can go looking for this. And it has a name, Seasonal Sampler. So that one I should be starting soon, but I'm trying to get my fabrics figured out. I have several ones in idea in mind. And I even thought about doing the seasonal sampler with these. But then I really got excited when I got that pattern. So I shifted gears. That never happens. I guess you never know what I'm gonna end up doing until I actually do it. The other project I'm working on, we're gonna start working on is the one I just showed you about the red, white, and blue. Um, those are individual blocks. So my goal is to start those blocks. And my shoulder surgery is nothing urgent and it's not been rescheduled so I have a ways where right now I expect to not have a usable arm and have to put some of these types of projects on hold. I can actually start working on these. So that is my goal is to get these started. Okay, so to do this one, I'm also trying to decide if I want to do a white background or a black background or maybe even gray. It'd have to be the right shade, but these have little silver um, flakes in them. And it is kind of Christmassy because it's like very frost. So it's like little frosty flakes, snowflakes. And I'm wondering if, even though this is a rainbow of colors, if really this is more Christmassy, which is why it might work well with one of my Christmas quilts. So now I'm not gonna cut it into it at all. <laughs> I need your input. Should I use it for Christmas? Should I use it for this? And which green do you think I should keep? I picked this up even though I saw a color picture of the quilt, but I was thinking it would be maybe two-tone, although they've got light blue and dark blue, so like a three-tone, which I think would be really pretty, not as busy. But if I were to use different colors, because this is fat quarter friendly, the rainbow I like. Oh. I really want to make work on this one right now. But what color of fabrics? Input, input, give me input. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. I really appreciate you being here and supporting my channel and helping me to grow. Remember, when I hit 5,000 subscribers, I will be doing another drawing, and this one will be for a nice little box of goodies. We have a little bit, but I think we're going to be there in about a month or two.